was so tired. The little foxy puppy. So hard to be a puppy. Oh my god. The sweetness. Oh, 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 I am recording this just that way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, little puppy dog. Little puppy. We have a puppy in the studio. So our YouTubers can see him? Yeah, show him. Look at the puppy. <laughs> Say Murphy. Hello, Murphy, to our YouTube friends. Little fox. He's just like a little fox. He's the cutest. Hi y'all, welcome to Hustle Humbly. It's Alyssa and Katie, and we are two top producing realtors in the Baton Rouge market. We work for two different companies where we should be competitors, but we have chosen community over competition. The goal of our podcast is to encourage you to find your own way in business. So stop comparing yourself and start embracing your strengths. Hey, hello, Alyssa. Hello, Katie. How are you? Wonderful. Excited to do part two. Part two. This is episode 64. So last week we talked about things don't not to do. Don't be a. Don't be a dot, blank. dot, dot. Don't be a. And there's so many things not to be. Right. And now we're going to do how to deal with a blank. Yes. So <laughs> part one was about controlling yourself. Right. And internal reflection and not. Don't be those things. Don't be those things. But we can't control other people. No, you're going to come in contact with a beat. You are. So, so you got to figure out how, how are you going to deal with it. Yeah. How are you going to deal with it? That's what we're talking about today. Yeah. All right. I feel like I should have recorded in order <laughs> which ones we did. I know. But guess what? That's not what happened. No. So we're just going to go down the list and just be like how. So really, this episode is going to be tips with dealing with this type of person and also maybe some tips for how not we told you not to be these things, but maybe we'll give you some tips on how not to be these things. Right. Okay. Like it. Uh, maybe let's start with how how to deal with being a pop tart agent. I like it. How to not be one. Okay. What do you do? And I think a lot of this can go back to client management episodes that we have. Yep. Um, but so much of dealing with this, the things we're going to talk about in today's episode, are mindset. Oh yes. Um, you cannot control other people. No but they will certainly influence you and affect your feelings and yeah. your mood and how yeah. you're conducting business. And we're trying Absolutely. to just like set our boundaries to where yeah. you handled things appropriately. I think, and the important part is how do you relay, we say boundaries a ton. So how much. do you relay the boundaries? What right. are the logistics of sharing your boundaries? Not just saying no, but how did you get there? Like, are you sending a buyer rules email or is there right. some conversation you're having with your buyers? How did they find out what your boundaries were? You can't assume they know them. Right. And they have to be relayed in a professional manner. So much of dealing with this is about being proactive. Agreed. And setting people's expectations up front. Agreed. Whether it's your client or the other realtor that you're working with or mm -hmm. the lender, mm -hmm. everybody needs to know how you operate. Right. To get through the transaction. Yeah. And even if it's a Pop-Tart agent. Yeah. Did you send that client the email template that explains showings take time. Mm -hmm. These are my hours. This is mm -hmm. how it works. Um, and also under client management, if you're showing a client 30 houses, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. If you're showing a client houses that didn't get a pre-approval for that price range, you're doing right. something wrong. Like you, you're wasting your own time, but the time of the seller who got their house ready, the agent who had to get feedback, like you, you have to get outside of your bubble and realize your poor decisions are affecting a seller, a buyer, and another agent. I have found whenever I sit down with agents and they are super frustrated, they don't realize it. But as an outsider, like as a neutral third party listening to yes. them, I know that a lot of the problem is them. Because <gasps> you can see where they can make I can improvements. see it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like, well, they're like, oh, my client is so annoying because of blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, did you train them or teach them? Wait, they wanted to otherwise. see 50 houses. Did you tell yeah, them that, that wasn't how it yeah. works? And, and it's just about so much of what we do is teaching and educating. Yeah. And if you're not teaching and educating, and if you don't have a system in place, you have to teach and educate constantly. Constantly. And it is exhausting. It, well, and it comes when you're not in a place to maybe address that. If you proactively teach and educate your client and the other agent on how the transaction is going to go, then it doesn't pop up at 8 p.m. or Sunday morning or 
whenever it is that you're not in that mindset, or maybe you're working with another client at that moment, and all of a sudden you have, you know, your buyers asking you frantic questions that could have been addressed in one email up front. Right. Right. So the more information you give them now, not everyone listens to your emails. Sure. And not everyone reads every word, but you will be shocked and amazed by how many people take that as gospel and listen to your rules and do what you say and follow your template and don't have to ask you question after question after mm-hmm. question one at a time. Right. I think ultimately the question they will question you to death because they don't know the answers and you could have just preemptively given all the answers. Right. For the most part. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and that's kind of like we talked about how a lot of agents rant about why don't agents leave feedback, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. My clients are upset because they're not getting feedback. My thing is, did you prepare your client that we won't always get feedback? Right. Why are they so surprised? Why are they so upset? Why They're do they want it in five minutes fault. after the showing? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Why? What? Did you tell them what to expect after right. a showing? You and just, like, you've got to give them some. Yes. You've got to give them some parameters that mm-hmm. cover what's to be expected. Yeah. And I mean, I think our email template when a house is just the just listed one explains hey oh my god this is the protocol for feedback they have 24 hours and then i do this and then i do this and if they don't right you know i wish that all agents left feedback but they don't yeah and i think that maybe i'm going to pause here for a second because i know it's going to come up a lot because the templates are the ultimate system for <laughs> dealing with this and um we're lining out exactly how things are going to go what's going to happen in that transaction when things are going to happen, what are the timelines for things? And this is not difficult for you to accomplish in your own business if right. you know what happens every time. Yes. Like if you're brand new at your first transaction, yeah, that's going to be pretty tough. But if you've done a handful, you're going to know this happens first, this happens next. These are the questions that my clients normally have. Sure. Like we're always editing the template to add someone has started asking this question a lot or maybe yes. I'm hearing this more often and I need to address it in one of these templates so that I'm not answering these questions one at a time. Right. I always laugh when people talk about um, for sale by owner and, you know, well, we can do this themselves, blah, blah, blah. And I automatically know my value because literally I know the sheer volume of questions that I answer. Right. <laughs> I, I promise you that it will take you a lot more Googling and you're not sure what source you're getting it from to mm-hmm. answer the amount of questions. It's like the reverse of being the Riddler. Like you're constantly like I'm being answer the answerer. I've got to answer questions all day. And the templates actually eliminate a lot of that. And I think that um, will help. With, with help, with and I know that. it's human nature to want to blame the other people and <gasps> say this agent didn't leave feedback. Yeah, they are making me look bad. But you really have to say why is my client so upset? Why does yeah. my client expect feedback yeah. within an hour of the showing? Yes. Why is my client surprised that sometimes you don't get any feedback and sometimes that's the feedback? Well, I think it's probably wise to first look at yourself. Yes, if something is annoying you in another agent, in your especially in your client. Um, was there a miscommunication? Was there some way you could have facilitated a better, you know, transaction in some way or a better response to a situation? Like, mm-hmm. look at yourself. I'm not saying that's always the case because a lot of the people we talked mm-hmm. about in last episode, I am not. Right. And um, you still have to deal with them in real estate because it is not a one man show. Right. Like you have to have another, typically another agent. If they're a complainer, like, how do you deal with that? Are you asking me? Yeah, tell me. Like if another agent is a complainer. complainer. What do you do? Well, you told us last time that you call agents in your office and are like, don't don't (laughs) do that. Don't do that. (laughs) But what if you don't know? What if it's just on the other side of the transaction? Y'all have all had an agent that was mad at life, unhappy, complaining, miserable, hated their client. And every time you had to contact them, Mm -hmm. you were nervous or annoyed. Or you like you were just prepared, right, to hear all of it and be like, and then they suck the life out of you, and you feel like miserable, and you hang up the phone feeling like, oh, I hope I never have to talk to them again. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do another transaction with them. So, how do you handle that though, Alyssa, when they are doing that? I handle it the same way I do a difficult client. Okay, and I'll just use this as an example. I had a seller recently that there was nothing I could do to make them happy. Even when we got offers, they were not good enough. Right. He was 
um, sharp with his words and rude at times. And at the first time that it happened, it really kind of caught me off guard yeah. and surprised me and let me know, okay, this is how this is going to go. Right. And I had to literally just adjust my mindset and kill kill them with kindness. Okay, thank you. Almost like it was a game. Oh my god, that was literally I what I had, had to, to talk make about. it a game. I was dying <laughs> because literally when I think of the worst clients and the worst agents I worked with, to me That's the only way. The competition with myself is can I get them to like me? Right. Can I get them to be nice to me? Yes. Like what can I do? to make like kill them with kindness yeah. it's over the top nice like you know and i think it's funny because i know last episode i mentioned don't be a punching bag but at some point when they're super difficult i'm like i'm gonna not let you affect me right i am not gonna let you make me sad <laughs> i am not gonna let you make me angry and it's gonna either drive you bananas or you're gonna like me but either way i'm gonna be happy because you're either driven bananas or you're happy. I'm going to be that annoyingly positive person yes, that yes. uses a bunch of thank yous and oh, my, exclamation points. You know, my default. <laughs> oh, look, I've had my email not hacked, but like my email, someone tried to pretend they were me to steal my clients like down payment, like a, oh, you wow, know, like like a wire a, fraud, thing. like a wire fraud thing. And you know how I was immediately like, immediately like, that's not me. I'm like, they did not say have a great day at the end of that email. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care what crazy shenanigans you've yeah. done to me or how mean. You either get a thank you or a have a great day. Right. And if there is, if it is just ends with a sentence and a period, that ain't from me. I had a, like, he, he would say stuff like, I'm so tired of getting this negative feedback. I don't want to even look at it anymore. And I would say, absolutely. I will take care of that right now. Yeah. And I will make sure that, you know, just being overly accommodating right. to yes. their attitude. And then they can't help but realize how difficult they're being right and they can't continue to be difficult if you always are just like okay, okay. i have a, a transaction recently with an absentee agent like once we went under contract i have they the, were they ghosted I have the you? buyer <laughs> yes <laughs> it, I, once we got the, my buyers got the house pending i got an email that was like hey please copy my transaction coordinator on everything and then he disappeared he's like and Bye. i only had and the house is actually kind of close to where i live so i drive by it a lot and okay the house was becoming very neglected. The grass was getting really tall and, oh, no. you know, all these things. And I would take a picture and send it to him and say, hey, you, you may want to address this. Mm -hmm. And um, he just, so he ended up emailing me and saying, hey, Alyssa, I know we agreed to these repairs, mm -hmm. but my seller really doesn't have the time. The house is vacant. I don't know where his sellers are. Okay. My seller really doesn't have the time to coordinate these three repairs. <laughs> right. Um, would your clients consider money instead? I had already talked about that with my client, and uh -huh. some of these things could have led to bigger things. And they and because it was only three things, they were very adamant that the seller just hire the right get them done comp company to provide a receipt. And I just responded, and because I'm thinking, why is your seller having? You should meet them. Yeah. Like you're the realtor. If you need to meet the AC guy there, you got to go. You do it. Yeah. So I just responded and said, or wait, can I interject? Yeah. Or come up with a solution that suits you like a combination lockbox. As long as your seller agrees to it. Right. And you don't want to show up over there. Right. Get a combo box and give the plumber the combo. Right. Like there's a solution. Yes. Okay. Carry on. He had no solution. No solution. So I said, um, Unfortunately, on this transaction, my clients really want the work done. Let me know if I need to meet the AC guy there. And what did he say? He said, I'll get it handled. Thank you. Thank you. But that was me <laughs> being like, thank you. Like one of us, this can be done. This can be done. Yeah. I will do your job if I have to for my clients. Say that again. I will do your job if I have to for my clients. Yes. That is the, that is the definition of being a good agent. And it was basically calling him out and saying, this is what you should be doing. Did you even hear yourself in your first email? Well, no, because I think what happens is a lot of times these don't do it people <laughs> are people who are going to see what they can get away with, right? They want to make it to the closing table with the minimum work done. Yes, and no one is holding them accountable. So if you don't hold them accountable, you basically called the guy out and said, hey, I'll go if you can't go, but the repairs have got to get done. First right. of all, you've already agreed to do that. Yes, they have, so they have been to get agreed. done. Yes. But I think that we're, 
as a response to these type of people, there is a way for you to hold people accountable and still be kind Mm -hmm. and still be nice. And it may, it may eat you up inside. It's hard sometimes. It's super hard sometimes. And I'm not going to say I've never raised my voice. It is typically with a lender who just will not listen to me. But there have been a client or two where I had to say no more. Right. Like no more. Um, But in 15 years, like I can literally think of one. Wow. That I couldn't just eat my pride right. and figure out a way to kind my way out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, like you just, you don't necessarily, and that may be a personality thing. Mm-hmm. And if that is not your personality to just let things roll off your back and figure out a way, then it is going to be tough to deal with mean agents or mean yes. clients or, um, you know, people who are doing things that generally annoy you on this list. Mm-hmm. You may have to do some inner work yes, to figure and- out. And it sometimes it takes experience and it just takes having the right, being around the right people and the right friends. Because if yeah. you're always hanging around, if you get lunch three times a week with the same agents in your office and y'all have a pity party every day at lunch and yeah. or just complain the whole time, you're going to burn out super fast. Yeah. You need to find some solution oriented friends who are like, well, let's talk it through. How can we fix it? What mm-hmm. can we do? Um, just wallowing in the problem is never going to fix it. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I totally agree with that. I think that there is a fine line between being walked over, being a pushover, being, you know, a punching bag and also just, you know, kind of taking it in, in the effort to make it easier for everyone. Right. Um, I've had some really not nice agents who were more experienced, been in the business like, you know, 40 years or something, you know, like, who just no matter what I did or what I said, they were ugly to me and they were mean and they, and I wasn't even inexperienced at the time. Like I was right. like a deep 10 years in and I'd be yeah. like, really? But yeah, I'm not that new. Okay. And then I just, you know, eventually I think a good piece of advice too is find a way you can contact them where they are the best. Okay. Right. So sometimes people are mean on the phone. Sometimes people are ugly in email. Sometimes people are ugly in text, but maybe your ugly texting agent when you call them on the phone is sweet as pie. Yeah. So that's what I think we can't get locked into a form of communication Mm -hmm. because I think there is some room in this with clients too. If you are talking to someone who sends you emails that you think are rude and short, try calling them on the phone and see if that's really the way it comes out, Mm -hmm. right? Because text doesn't always translate. It kind of goes back to like, if you're starting it off by saying, I feel blah, 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 like it may not even be true. No, it may not even be true. So figure that out first. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. So tips for being, let's do negligent. Okay. Don't be a negligent because there were a lot of those. There were. And I I know I talked a lot about um, just being I have to try really hard to be super detail oriented and yeah. like thoroughly reading receipts from repairs yes. and making sure there's not a transferable warranty if the client got new windows or foundation right. work and, you know, really looking out. But I think it all comes, a lot of that is solved by just having systems in place. Agree. So if you have a system in place where maybe five days before closing, you have on your calendar that all the receipts for Main Street repairs are due this day. And it's a calendar event. It's and a calendar event. jog your memory. To say, hey, this is five, This one's closing in five days. Today is the deadline to have all receipts. What yeah. do I have? What am I missing? And then you send that agent an email and say, hey, yeah, this is what I receipts? have. Yes. And you may even want to set it like seven days before. However, yeah. you know, our market, you have to give receipts five days before Right, but whatever works. Closing. But maybe two days before the deadline to say, hey, mm-hmm. I know the deadline is two days away. Um, see, that's what I just changed because I used to check on them on the due date. And that was too And that late. was problematic yeah. because sometimes something wasn't done yet. I like that. So it really needs to be like two two or three days before Prior. to say, hey. Is if, it finished? Yeah, right. because you owe them in three days. Yeah, and I know some people have asked or mentioned like micromanaging and not wanting to do that. But I do think if we fine, call it a facilitator. Mm -hmm. You do have to somewhat check on these things. And because sometimes I don't even know that the agent is intentionally being negligent. Like maybe there's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so busy this week, or I was out of town last week or whatever. But you have to sort of be the squeaky wheel sometimes Mm -hmm. and be like, hey, it's time for my receipts. You do. Do you have my receipts? Um, What happens when they still won't provide you the receipts or something, or they're still being like difficult? I think the biggest thing is keeping your client in the loop. Yeah. 
what the mistake I made recently was that I was requesting them a bunch and I wasn't getting them, but I didn't let my client know. And they were like, why haven't you done this? Yes. And then I had to say, well, I have been for three days, but they didn't know. Your clients don't know what you're doing yeah. unless oh, you tell them. That's the truth. Your clients do not know. Buyer clients, seller clients, all your clients do not know what you're doing unless you communicate that to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you have a difficult agent, let's just say the listing agent, they haven't provided receipts. They, you know, haven't whatever, whatever request it is that you've made, they haven't done it. HOA information or whatever it is. Sure. Um, try and think if there's a creative way for you to solve it. Like at mm -hmm. HOA info, can you call the title company? Do they have their contact right. info? Usually they do like something like that. Is there another person that can help you? Um, but if it's like the receipts and you're at their mercy, you can always just say, hey, can you tell me who the service provider was? And I'll reach out for the receipt. Mm -hmm. Or you can just tell your client, I have asked for the receipts. They said that the repairs are done. I don't have the receipt. If we don't have them before walkthrough, we can always bring the inspector back. Mm -hmm. We can always just check the, I mean, like you can't create a receipt out of thin air. Right. So there is a point in time, but I also think it's important here not to bash the other agent or the other seller buyer client mm -hmm. because Always. that just makes the parties angry it and does. it escalates and we're yes. trying to de-escalate situations especially right. when you're dealing with any of these don't be a people mm -hmm. you need to de-escalate yes yeah, so you don't need to let your clients in on the drama no i do think if you have to it's appropriate to say i want to let you know i've been reaching out to the listing agent trying to get these receipts i have not had luck this is what i've been told i'm still working right. on it but they don't need to know like this agent hasn't responded the whole transaction and this is what's going on. And the sellers right. are not doing what they're supposed to, because then all of a sudden the buyers yeah. are, oh my yeah. gosh, what's happening? Yeah. Yes. None of that needs to be, you deal with that yourself. Yeah. And we talk about this a lot in keeping the emotion out of real estate. Mm -hmm. um, I think that comes up a lot here because it is frustrating to deal with a feedback ghost. Yes. Or you know, whatever a deal killer or whatever these agent is doing. Yeah. It's just super frustrating. You need to do some yoga or take a 20 minute nap or take some deep breaths or go have a glass of wine. I don't, there's just going to have to be a way for you to separate. Right. Because when I read the request for this and they were like, what do I do? I was like, Ooh, sometimes I just, I don't have that. I can't fix it. No, I can't fix the other party. Right. Right. But I can, I can choose how I respond to it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you do. You choose how you want to respond to it. And how much time you want to, time and attention you want to give it. Do mm -hmm. I want to spend all day telling everybody I see how crappy this other agent was? Or do I want to spend all day doing something more positive? Mm -hmm. Right? I would think so. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. What other ones do you want to tell us how to deal with? Hello, friends. We are so excited that so many of you are using the template course and the reviews are just pouring in, letting us know that it has helped your business as much as it has helped our business. Yes. Listen to this review. Thank you so much for providing this wealth of information, knowledge, and template form. So far, I've used a handful and received positive feedback like, this is so professional, or I really appreciate how organized you are. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, Your clients are actually there. gonna say that. Yes. All right, here's another one. Thank you so much for this. I can't tell you how many times I've started this and how many notebooks of samples and notes I had. <laughs> I have ADHD and it is super hard to stay focused on getting it done. Having it all in one place is gonna make it so nice. That is what we're here for. I know, just look, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just yeah. use these. Yeah, nice and simple, easy, ready to go, ready for you to put your own logo on, make it sound like you. So head over to hustlehumblypodcast.com slash course slash course and check it out that's right and you're going to enjoy them you're going to love them you're gonna it's going to change your life literally fired <laughs> my assistant they are the best okay, enjoy bye, the template yes enjoy what about we talked about pop tart and the safety i think that it's okay too i want to go back to that real quick if you've created boundaries and systems and um, rules for your business it is okay to tell people why mm -hmm. Like, I cannot show you the house in 10 minutes because the seller needs to get their house ready or because, you know, of safety, I need to know that you're pre-approved or like, right. these are the whys of why we're doing these things. Mm -hmm. uh, or I need you to come to my office for your first appointment because of safety. It's our safety protocol. Right. Like, that's it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say anything more than that. Yeah. Um, okay. What is our tip for 
don't be a secret agent quitter. Hmm. <laughs> Do you have any tips? I mean, I think it mindset surrounding yourself with the right people. And I think too, a lot of reasons people quit real estate early is because they, in the beginnings, there's not a lot of structure yeah. because you don't really have clients. You don't have to be at inspections and just finding ways to like oh, fill your days. Don't fall into bad habits. Right. Don't make it a 2 p.m. Netflixer every single day. You know, build a habit that takes you in front of people mm -hmm. like the gym, people that are not realtors. Yeah. The gym or I don't know your favorite coffee shop or whatever it is. And then just do real estate work. Right. I, I know it sounds like you're like, what does that mean? Go listen to what to do when you're new or slow. There were days for sure when I was new that at five o'clock, I was like, what did I even do today? Right. Like I didn't do anything. Was but... I shopping all day? I'm not a shopper, you know, but right. was I, I don't know, watching TV all day? What was I doing? What was I doing? Did I do anything? Right. When you think about now. For the future? Right. <laughs> What have I done for the future today? Have I even written a single letter to anyone oh, or reached yeah. out? Like there's so much you could do. So much you can do. So create and the secret agent thing, I think start seeing yourself as an agent. Yeah. Even if it's your side hustle, even if it's your part-time gig, even if you're like not taking yourself super seriously yet, or people don't know, just every day when you wake up, be like, I am a realtor mm -hmm. and today I'm going to sell houses or right. whatever. And you just keep telling yourself. And then when you meet people in person, you say, they're like, what do you do? Oh, well, I'm a realtor. I sell houses. I, what do you do? I love to help people, you know, buy and sell at the same time. I love to help first time buyers. I don't, you know, they tell you all these, um, you know, gurus will tell you to have a, like a why statement and an elevator pitch and all that mm -hmm. jazz. But I mean, Hey, maybe that's a good idea. Yeah. If you, it, but being a secret agent is also about you not even having your ears perk up when someone you know, like, or trust says they want to sell their house. Right. I'm like, excuse me. Hey. Yeah. Like, hey, <laughs> what do you tell me? Or like be available to answer questions mm -hmm. and let people know that that is, you know, an acceptable way to talk. To, and then you won't be a secret agent. Right. Because then you're standing in front of one person who asks a question and the other person is like, oh, wait, I want to know about my neighborhood or mm -hmm. my house or whatever. So I think that is definitely a mindset issue. Um, also on, so I started doing this thing after I show a house every time Okay. in the note section of my phone, I have a little thing that just says, I made sure to turn off all lights and lock doors and we didn't touch the thermostat. Oh, I like it. And I copy and paste, like I copy it. And then after I've showed three houses, I write the feedback, paste, send. I write oh. the feedback, paste. Uh -huh. So it's in every yeah. feedback, uh -huh. but it, I feel like it just, Let's the agent know like, oh, I treated your home professionally. Yes. I did not. I don't have to wonder if the door is unlocked I right wasn't now. negligent. Yeah. Right. I've turned off the lights. This and I feel like it at. just kind of like steps you above the rest oh, totally. to let them know, like, not only did I leave you feedback, but I also just put your mind at ease. Here's to let everything you know. I did while I was there. Yes. I think this is a great thing that's and come it's out of And it's just copy this. and paste it. Just let people, so are templates. Yeah. <laughs> just let people know what you are doing. Right. Agents the public clients now and the public we'll go back to secret agent for a minute post tips that you're maybe not sharing to anyone in particular but here's a tip on showing your house here's a tip on mm -hmm. checking your house for safety after an open house here's mm -hmm. a tip on this like just be a source of information and you right. will very quickly go from being a secret agent to people know what yes. you do and and the same thing like when you are the buyer's agent yes and you are leaving the home inspection uh -huh. before you even leave the house just shoot the listing agent an email that says we are finishing up i made sure our doors are locked and paste copy again? and paste it Love and it. say and give them a little heads up with how it went uh -huh. we are very concerned about this and this but i will have something to you tomorrow right or it went really well overall a few minor things i'll have something to you tomorrow yeah but it prevents the text or the call or the email that says how did it go? Yeah. And you know why they did it? Because their their seller did it to them. Their seller did it so to them. So save them the heartache by, yeah, I agree. That would be um, really covering your bases, mm -hmm. not being negligent. It would just be the impatient issue that we talked about last week. Cut off these things before they have to happen. Right. The agent, the listing agent isn't going to have to 
text you at 10 p.m. that night to be like, hey, how did that inspection go? Right. If five minutes after the inspection, you sent the cut and paste plus plus how it went, whatever, yeah, text or email or however you want to share it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's amazing. And these little things, I mean, they're they're so quick and they just they really make you feel like it, it's really impressive to the other agent. Yes. Yes. OK, I want to stop because you just said they're so quick. We're going to revisit feedback for a minute because I know this is a hot button issue in our market and I'm sure sure everywhere, especially as a listing agent, you feel like you need to tell your seller something after a showing. If you can't find the other agent, if they won't give you feedback and, you know, if you're calling and texting plus the auto emails and you still can't get anything, um, I just want to point out to everyone. It's your duty. And we've said this in other episodes and responsibility to provide feedback. And it does not take a long time. Mm-mm. Alyssa has even done it whilst she's standing <laughs> in the house on the app. Pretty often. It's a, ours is a four question, typically mm-hmm. choose, your, you know, multiple choice plus right. a blank at the end. If you can't find a few words to put in the blank, that's not good either. But at least do the multiple choice and be done with it. Sure. I mean, Something. Come on. Something. It does not take that long. So um, maybe my tip there would be like, don't pretend like you don't have time. Sure. You do. Mm-hmm. If you were on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram that day, you had a hot minute to do feedback. Mm -hmm. I love when agents tell you how busy they were and they couldn't do their job (laughs) because I'm like, you're so busy, but you had a few minutes. Yeah, you could have done that. You had it because it didn't take that long. Mm -mm. Okay. What about don't be, what what is our tip for D? I guess we've kind of talked about how to deal with mean, rude, cranky, alarmist, bully, combative agents. We're just going to like. Let it roll. Kill kill them with kindness. Kill them with kindness. I I literally have to pretend like it's a game that I'm going to win. No, I literally do that too. Yeah. Because I'm making it into a competition. I can't just do it out of the goodness of my heart sometimes. You're like, I have to be like, this is a game and I'm going to win. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you by being nice. I totally. I'm going to annoy you with my kindness. Agree. I think that, (laughs) look, y'all, when that, sometimes that's all you can do. I I think that's fine. And one of my favorite, favorite quotes, tips, whatever you want to call it, proverbs is, if you get more flies with honey. Yes. And you just do. It just and is I don't, the truth. Even when I have to yell at a lender, my very next communication is sweet as can be. Like if I have a momentary lapse where it is going too far and I'm like having to be like firm, like you're not going to walk all over me firm. I still go back to being nice. Yeah. It's not like I've lost that. And you can be firm and respectful. I agree. I feel like there are people out there that think to be firm, you have to go rude or no. threatening. Or they think you have to be rude or threatening to win the negotiation or to mm-hmm. get your, you know, whatever taken care of. I mean, everyone is trying to reach the same goal. Sure. So, I mean, like, it's silly for you to act like that. Now, mm-hmm. the bullying older experienced agent, not older, but experienced agent, mm-hmm. y'all just got to stop that. And on the flip side, the newer techie agents who are annoyed with the seasoned agents that do business differently, Mm -hmm. like as newer agents, you need to respect, respect the people people that have been in the business a long time and they're still doing it and give them some grace. If they're trying to figure out the new showing system or the new, you know, MLS system or how to get a listing onto Zillow or whatever it is, Mm -hmm. um, give everyone some grace yourself and the others around you and again i don't remember what that quote is but you know you they always say you never know what someone's dealing with right maybe that mean rude crabby agent you're dealing with has something really terrible going on maybe this isn't even normally how they are or maybe they're horrible all the time but right. either way you can be nice i've even said like is there anything i can do to make this easier for you oh i like that how does that go <laughs> it, it lets them know i'm sensing you're difficult <laughs> Is there anything I'm I not going to take it personal and right. I'm willing to do some of your job on behalf of my clients. That's right. You know, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing. To, yeah. Because I think that's a, a pride thing. And we're like our principal thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're not going to do your job. It's not yeah. my job. Well, my job is to get my client to the table without them being stressed and miserable. Right. And if that means I have to take on a little bit of stress or misery to, to sort through that, then I just do. Mm-hmm. Like I'm here to shoulder that burden. And that's why when it's time for me to say my value to my clients, I don't feel confused about that. Right. Because I'm not shirking off things that maybe other agents don't want to do. I'm going above and beyond to provide a client experience. And my clients don't necessarily know I'm doing those things. Sure. They don't know that I didn't tell them how mean the other agent was. Right. And they don't need to know. They don't need to know all that. We're here to shield them. The shield. 
Um, well, in our last episode, we said, don't be a client stealer. Oh, yeah. How do we want to deal with that? Um, so it, again, goes to how are you communicating with your clients? Yeah, right. Are you preparing them? Like I tell my clients at our buyer consult, yeah. I say, look, I encourage you, if y'all don't have anything to do on a Sunday and you want to go to open houses, I think it's great it. mm -hmm. when you walk in the front door, say, hey, Alyssa Jenkins is my realtor. And they will say, great. Thank you for letting me know. Right. And I tell my clients, I always love when I have an open house and someone walks in and tells me who their agent is. Yes. Um, so it's about educating your client so they don't accidentally stumble. Well, you're teaching your clients not to be stealable. Right. So it's, that's how you deal with client stealers. Right. So I'm not going <laughs> to worry about the agents because some agents are just going to do that. I'm going to teach my client yes. not to be stealable. And that could be, you know, in the template, you know. Yeah. It has the rules about it does have the rules. if you walk through new construction, if you yeah. see it for sale by owner, if you go to an open house, this and then how the to clients handle it. know. Yeah. They mm -hmm. just know. Right. And then it also sort of brings to their attention all the different types of homes because you don't want to be the one that didn't tell them that for sale by owners exist. Right. Or you didn't tell don't them hide that, from that it. Don't hide from that. Or be that you proactive. didn't tell them that that new construction neighborhood existed. Like, just be like, hey, you may run across new construction that isn't listed, or you may run yeah. across a for sale by owner that isn't listed. I can still work with you. I can still like, and here are the rules for that. Like, don't, don't hide. This Sunday, mm -hmm. I was um, power washing our back patio. I was like, had been picking up sticks from the hurricane. I was like working out in the yard. Mm -hmm. And I have a text from my, one of my buyers that said, hey, I made a mistake. I saw a house on Trulia and I just had a question about it. So I clicked something and then an agent called me and I asked the question and then they asked if I wanted to see it at three o'clock and I do, but I told them that you were my agent, but they said they can still schedule it at three o'clock. But I remember you said, don't do that. Don't do that. So I'm texting you to see what I should do. And it was like noon and I was actually um, available to go at three o'clock that day. You were day. like, I can handle this. And I was like, just tell them to cancel your appointment. But she could have not texted me. She, if she didn't know if the rules. If she didn't remember, she was like, I remember what you said. Because you know what she could have thought, which most buyers do? They thought they were talking to the listing yes. agent. Or just like an info. Yeah. I just want more info. Oh, you can show me that? She said, I just asked if the house had a formal dining room or not. That was it. That's all she wanted to know. Did like, she end up wanting the house? She did. I showed it to her at 3 o'clock. We ran numbers and we were about to write an offer and it went pending. Oh, so I was kind of sad. But, you know. Okay. But I was thankful that she followed. She followed the rule. Maybe not at first. So not because she was an accident. She said, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. But even after she told the other agent, I have a, a realtor, they still said, well, I can still show you. Which is a client stealer. Hell. That's a client stealer. So That's how do you deal stealer. with it? You educate your buyers right. so they remember. Be like, no one can show you the house but me. Right. I mean, they can. But right. Then, they're, then, then I can't help you. Then I'm not going to be able to help you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like that. Uh, that's so crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? We've already talked about the complainer. Okay. Don't be a false advertiser, bragger, mm -hmm. all about me. The problem I have with the braggers or, you know, false information posters mm -hmm. is that it does affect my mental state when it comes yeah. to like comparison. I like, totally should I be agree. doing better? I stink at real estate. Right. I'm no good at Instagram. You know, if there right. is someone or some, if there is someone on social media that every time you see makes you feel down about yourself or, or just angry because you know, it's not true. Just and unfollow. Just unfollow them. I can't, can't or tell mute. <laughs> you, I can't tell you how good it is to just for your mindset yeah. and for your overall positivity to just unfollow, yeah. mute, whatever you need to do. Right. It's wonderful. It's fine. And that's how you deal with it. That's a perfect way to deal with it. That's what you do. I love it. Um, also, I think on negligence kind of fell in with the um, false advertising, the bad photos, mm -hmm. and the, how do you deal with these things? Well, just go back and listen to the professionalism episode, but you get the photographer and mm -hmm. you, you don't leave the door unlocked whenever you go do the showing and you Make sure to send an offer with a pre-approval and not show your 
buyers a bunch of houses with no pre-approval. Like you, you get to steer that ship. So on that note too, um, offers with no pre-approval or Mm -hmm. agents not being timely, not meeting deadlines. Like you give someone until noon to respond and they don't. Yeah. I had that happen twice this weekend. (laughs) Oh. I received two offers okay. that neither had a pre-approval letter. Uh-oh. Um, also, a lot of the purchase agreement was blank on a lot of them. Um, a lot of red flags. But yeah. I just, and I just had to be upfront with my seller. Again, it's all about communication. Yeah. Hey, we have an offer. I want to let you know it did not come with a pre-approval letter. Right. I have some concerns and questions, but we need to meet this deadline to respond. Right. So in the counter offer, I put um, within 12 hours of acceptance, right? buyer to provide a pre-approval letter from a lender stating that debt and income credit, blah, 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 has all been checked and verified and good to go. Um, We will try to choose the title company since we we can't control who their lender is, but we can control the title company. Yeah. So it's really about when you get things like this, you can't control the other side. No. You can't tell them you have to use this lender because no. I will feel more comfortable. No. But control what you can. Yes. And you can put anything in a counter offer. Yes. That will protect your seller. Yes. So if you're worried about For something, sure. um, you can do anything you want okay, to I'm protect a, your seller. I agree. And there is another, so I guess we didn't, if you're dealing with another agent who is negligent in something like showing etiquette or, you know, leaving the door unlocked, leaving it, whatever adjusting the thermostat you're just going to have to take it from your seller a little bit and say i'm sorry that that happened and i will add a note to the showing instructions Mm -hmm. try and have an action we've talked about this before try and have an action item paired with an apology Mm -hmm. if at all possible because you can't change the negligent behavior of other agents right but you can choose to you know address it and let it go and communicate with your client and be done and not have to make it this big deal where yeah. the seller is so mad mm-hmm. or, you know, it's got to be like a big fight. Um, I think that you can handle it. Because some of these things you can't change about other people, but you can change how you handle it. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about, can we go back to your story of the fence and the, <laughs> and the forgetting to cover your bases and that, how what have you learned like how would you handle it different next time next time of course if i had the option i would take the money over the fence right we had come to an agreement that makes that leaves no room for judgment on the work done or how things are done money is money no matter who it is so hot tip yeah just take the money and take the money even if you're even if it would be more convenient for the work to be done. No, because I guess the other tip there would be don't change terms once everyone's agreed to terms. Yes. Because if they had never called you and said, this fence guy has an opening tomorrow, mm-hmm. it would have saved you, literally right. you, over $1,000. Yes, I would have $1,000 more dollars right now. Right. <laughs> but he made this call that said, oh, fence guy is available tomorrow. Would mm-hmm. you like him to do it? And the, you call a buyer, buyer says yes, you say yes, and then you have the wrong fence, and now we're in this mess. Yes. Uh, but I guess the point is leave well enough alone. Right. Like if everyone has agreed, don't overthink just it. Just don't overdo, just take the money, be done. Mm-hmm. And don't, if we don't have to keep negotiating once the negotiation's over. Right. Some people do that. It just keeps going. Well, that's okay. We're all finished here. Yes. Like, thank you. Yes. The end. Like there has to be an end of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything else you learned from that that you want to share? I think just it, taking the extra time to communicate and run things by all parties. Yeah. To make sure everybody's on the same page. Yeah. I do find that putting things in writing yes. and getting photos and being mm-hmm. really over the top specific with details mm-hmm. on anything that's being a- agreed to be done. Mm-hmm. So like I recently had, this is great when I think I told the story of the, the builder that yelled at me about the mirror. Um, I had new construction clients. The house that they chose wasn't a custom built home. It was a spec, but it was not quite done. Okay. So we were writing an offer and in the offer I had to write in, we'd like to know the finishes. I mean, yeah. like, like the ha- the floor was down, and the, but it wasn't stained yet. And like the mirrors weren't up and like the the um, stair railing wasn't up. Like there were, it was a pretty high dollar house. Like there were some important things that 
important finishes that you would want to know. Sure. And they weren't even asking to pick them. Mm. They just wanted to know what they were so that they could be like, yes, I do want to buy this house. I approve. (laughs) It would be like buying a house without seeing it complete. Well, you'd like to know what it's going to look like, right? Yeah. Well, in, in the asking for specs, I listed out the few things that were left. Okay. So it was very specific. Tell me what the stair railing is going to look like. Tell me what the mirrors are going to look like. Tell me what the floor stain is going to look like and let us approve that color. That was the only color we wanted to approve. And they they agreed. They agreed to all the terms. Great. But when it came time and I followed up because they didn't just automatically send me that info. No, no. When I followed up, they sent everything except for the mirrors. Did I ever tell the story? I don't remember. I might not have. They sent everything but the mirrors and, um, it just says um, mirrors are, are are at our designer's home right now. They're they're already selected, and I'm like, well, that what doesn't do they look tell like? me much. Yeah. But okay, and we all were just like fine with that, whatever. Um, well, then the next time my buyers went to the house, the mirror for the hall bathrooms were sitting on the floor, about to be installed, still in their original packaging, and it was a very high end home with these still the price tag on them sixty dollar mirrors from Kirkland. Okay. And so the buy my buyer was like, I'm just kind of shocked. Like they're for what I'm paying for, for what this I'm house. for. This is a very nice house. They all the other finishes were so nice, so we didn't think that it would be a problem. And whenever I brought it to the agent who was the whatever, whenever I brought it to the agent's attention, I got a very irate builder calling me and fussing about the situation the mirrors like okay. they don't like the mirrors they don't have to buy the house kind of situation okay and i was like whoa okay i'm like hey no need to be know, so angry, angry. No. right exactly i was like listen they were just surprised that's all it's a very nice home you've made such wonderful choices they were just surprised i wasn't we were just asking if we could get an allowance and we would pick our own mm-hmm. like wasn't anything crazy sure and it just sort of it, he wasn't gonna stop yelling and i was i didn't i was just like okay no problem bye-bye we left it alone. Like they were like, we'll just replace it later if we don't like it. whatever, you know. Sure enough, at the final walkthrough, there were some very nice mirrors. Um, really? But but we never agreed. Like I'm very surprised. We just like we're like, okay, well, I mean, like he's told angry about it. We're just gonna move on. Like that's the other thing. I told my buyer, I'm sorry this happened. Yeah. But I can't force him to put up a different mirror or give right. you an allowance. Right. I'm sorry. And if they had really been super upset i guess i could have bought a mirror for them but they were like it's okay we, we, you know we'll just change it later if we want and change the mirror. that's amazing yeah most but, would not no most would not but my point is when you're talking about details like that and you don't put them in writing or you don't see a photo that is what can happen the fence right. is two feet shorter like we don't mm-hmm. you didn't think to ask about the height of the fence or get the specs of it and we've both been doing this a very long time so i, I think You learn from every situation. You do. And you add (gasps) to your processes and you add to your systems and you add to your, um, like, you know, how to check for all these details. You add or you find ways to not need to. Like, just take the money. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, Also, I think under forgetting to cover your bases, we had um, uploading the right documents or making sure your MLS is fully completed or getting all the photos on there or making sure that you have a homeowner fill out a homeowner info sheet. And that way, you know who the HOA contact is. You can do all that as the listing agent up front. Yes. And then it's done. Now, if you're the buyer's agent and the listing agent has been negligent in that way, request it early. (laughs) Yeah. Or you're just going to have to find another way to get the info or you're going to have to tell your buyer, I'm so sorry. We don't have this info. You don't have to buy the house, but I can't get it. Like, I mean, like this is... uh, this is all I have. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. I guess some things you just have to like agree to be like, it is what it is. Yes. Okay. What else? Who did we miss? Um, how do you deal with deal killers? Oh my gosh. The deal killers. (gasps) Um, I will say like, if I am making an offer that is far from what someone is asking, or if I am submitting a lengthier repair request, Mm -hmm due to the condition of a home, I always try to write a little something in the email for the agent to forward to their client. Communication. That's not just like, here, uh, here's, here's, my, low offer. here's my low offer. Get You give like, an explanation. Why? why is it a low offer? Explain the comps that your buyers are seeing. Keep it all very factual. Oh, facts? Yes. yes. And so and emotionless. it just helps. Yes, it just really helps with the fact that yep. 
the, if if you didn't, it could kill the deal. And you know what kind of like is a pet peeve of mine? Let's hear it. When an agent calls me and is like, look, they really want to accept, but they're worried about the windows and they're worried they want to update this and this is old. And I'm like, can you put that all in an email? Right, because I can't. I need to show that, show what you're saying to me to my client. And then it'll be easier for me yes. to get you what you need. Yeah. It's so much easier to say, this is what they said. Because they don't believe it's coming from you sometimes. Right. They, or they think it's coming from you and not from the other party. It always helps when it's coming from someone I else. Agree. I agree. So helping the other agent by explaining, like, you know, saying, hey, I know this inspection report looks like a lot of items. But seven of them are are electrical. So just seven one, ele one, one electrician call. can do seven of these things. So I hope it doesn't overwhelm your sellers. We right. tried to keep it very a right. very good list. And we there was a lot of things we didn't ask for as well. Yeah, I think that's important to point out too. Yes. It's just it helps it softens the blow. It helps right. the other agent deliver a tough message whenever it's their yep. you know deal. So it kind of reminds me too of I don't remember which one it was that you were talking about and it was they sent over the cancellation and then yes. you called you were like can i yes. can i call the buyer right and it sounds to me like that that agent was a cross between a deal killer and impatient <laughs> yes like they had lost their patience with their buyer yes they and they were, were like i don't care i don't want to help them anymore right and so you had to find oh. a way around. hey do you mind if i call your buyer i'd much so if you're trying to deal with a deal killer mm -hmm. why don't you ask them Hey, do you mind if I call your buyer? I just mm -hmm. want to see if we can work it out. Sometimes sure. they're like, fine, I don't care. Yeah. See what you can do. Like, mm -hmm. I can't figure it out. Um, also, on that note, we had the negotiating over like $500 to $1,000, like hard-headed negotiators. Like, sometimes I just have to tell my clients, do you want to lose the house over that? Right. Like, it's on you. I mean, like, whoever, if the other party's being the hard-headed one, and mm -hmm. I can't control the other party because I'm not their agent. I just sometimes will say it's not worth it for five hundred dollars. Like, Some, yeah, and I mean sometimes if it's my buyers, I usually email the lender before I like say we made an offer and we have a counter offer. Mm -hmm. I'll email the lender and say, "Hey, we made an offer for this. Mm -hmm. They counter with this. Do you mind letting me know how much that changes their monthly note?" Yeah. So then when I call my buyer, I say, "Hey, I have a counter offer." They came up on the price six thousand dollars. It will change your monthly note by twenty three dollars a month. I like the way you framed that because six thousand is a lot of money yes. to a buyer. Yes, it is. Twenty three dollars a month is like, oh well, that's not such a big deal. Right, not but, a big deal. But and that six thousand dollars was a big deal to the seller. It was a big deal. So it's very important that you're telling your buyer in those terms. Yes, that'll save a deal. Yeah. And then on the selling side saying, look, I know that we're still $5,000 apart. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to look at how much it costs for utilities, your mortgage, your mm -hmm. yard upkeep, yeah, anything that you're paying for the house, how many months, like three months. Yeah. And you, you, that is $5,000. Right. Like we don't know. So always just trying to, so many agents just forward things to their clients. <gasps> oh, that is a great and they don't, talk about. it doesn't come with any kind of buffer explanation, right? Like delivery, free, nothing. No, you guys don't do that. Don't do that. Don't just, and <laughs> also don't just forward it with all of their contact info. Oh man. Make it hard for them to find the other agent. Yes. You do not want your buyer or your seller to go rogue and start calling I have the a other agent. that does that. But so I'm really careful <laughs> if I am forwarding an email because I need them to read it in their words. Yes. I'm delete everything. To, and I know, I'm no dummy. I know they can go find their email address, but yes. I'm not going to just hand it to them on a silver platter. Right, right. Like you, you, you have to work for it. This isn't how it's supposed That's not to go. That's how it works. I always delete their email address. And sometimes I'll delete some of the sentences if they're inappropriate. Yes. If they filter. have said something rude about the sale, like if I'm sending it to my seller and they said something rude about their house, Delete that sentence. Right. You can still share the part that's appropriate. I'm not change. I'm not altering it in any way. Right. But I'm removing the unneeded information. Correct. I don't need to hurt anyone's feelings to get the house sold. I had like I just forwarded um, something to my seller where we got a lower offer, and the agent had told me on the phone, "Hey, our offer's low because of this." And I said, "When you send me the offer, can you put that in the email?" Right. So, and she actually said, "Like, well, they really." find the granite 
hideous and blah 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 so i just i deleted hideous and put outdated <laughs> <laughs> that's before fair before i forwarded it because it hurt you don't want to hurt you don't want to hurt feelings you don't you we are here to keep things neutral <laughs> right and i think it's fair to edit in that case yes but and i have taken a word out before for sure <sighs> yeah you y'all you get to choose which information you share with your clients right you can re state it you can frame you didn't have to forward the email mm -hmm. you could have just said they said this sure if it was so bad but be mindful of how that message is going to be received by your client correct like what are what are you sharing with them like how are they like put yourself in their shoes mm -hmm. like is this low offer going to be like they now they can't buy the house they want to buy like sure. you have to really think it all the way through and it's not about you and it's not about how you feel and it is about how you can facilitate the other person achieving their goal mm -hmm. and then you get paid right and that's what you get paid for correct because it's a job it's not about making you happy mm -hmm. i mean you're supposed to be doing a function and a service and i think that is a very good point okay anything else that we've missed on how to deal with the don't be as i don't know that's all my notes i had to i don't know if we talked about the don't be a slow responder but um just work on your if you are a slow responder Work on your time blocking, have a time twice or three times a day when you set aside five minutes to respond to quick issues, mm -hmm. quick emails, or just get in the habit of doing them when they come. And then dealing with a slow responder, oh. because here's where I make the mistake. I have a, so I have a client who say emails me and says, Hey, can you find out about this? When this house will be complete. Right. I then email the agent yeah. to say, Hey, when will this house be complete? And then you, it's out of your, the ball's out of your court. Yeah. And then, and then I never forget. follow up with it. I have that same struggle. And then my client's like, hey, did you ever hear do back? You know, do you know what? In five days, <laughs> Gmail oh would God. say, hey, so it's so never responded to your email. Does it do that? It, I think it's five days though. That's a pretty long time if it's a simple question, but still I'll be like, oh shoot. Like Gmail puts the ball back in my court. I wonder if that's a setting. It might be a setting. So oh, if yes. I've sent an email that did not get a response five days later, it populates it back to my inbox and, and says, says they did. this did not get responded to. Wow. Now that would be helpful. That is super helpful. Well, what I've had to do is leave the email that my client of my client requesting it in my email until I get an answer, yeah. which is kind of annoying. Right. It's hard so for me. If you have any type of to-do list, right. you could leave it on there. But what I was doing was because I did what he asked me to do by inquiring, I was deleting his email. Because you're like, I'm done with my part. Right. But then but the slow responder people, yes. didn't get you what you needed. Yes. And then it looked like you weren't doing your part. Right. So oh. I do think you kind of have to follow up on your follow up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, follow up on the follow up. Make sure that you're writing things down or keeping oh them top of mind. God. But that's how you have to deal with it. It's like that you can't sure just assume you that everybody's going to answer their email. No, you can't. Mm. Oh my gosh. Interesting. Very. Okay. So I think we've caught them all. Yeah. Or I hope so. A lot of good tips. Um, and so last week, remember we toasted to our friend. Yes. Um, John Cole. Okay. Cole. I don't think Cole. that's what you said last week. But... Cole. Okay. I don't know. Cole. Um, and John is a newer agent and he actually wanted to toast to his fellow younger or newer agents, um, in his market. Um, because he hears them being frustrated with some of these don't sure. be us. Yeah. And, um, he just wants to say cheers to them for, you know, sticking it out. And hopefully we can say cheers to them that this episode will help them figure out how to navigate some of these, um, troublesome. We're agents. all in this together. We're all in this together. And our Hustle Humbly listeners are going to be like the best realtors to do business with. Yeah. Oh so, my gosh, they are. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So all of us Hustle Humbly listeners are out there just killing the world with kindness. That's right, friends. You <laughs> you be the agent other agents want to work with. And cheers to John. Thank you so much for this request. And cheers to his uh, compadres who are new and need need the, I don't know, need support. The, yes, the <laughs> they cheers. They need the support. Perfect. Cheers. Go have that drink. <laughs> okay, bye, friends. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Hustle Humbly podcast. Let us know who we should toast to for the next episode. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hustle Humbly Podcast. If you have an episode, topic, or question, please email us at hustlehumblypodcast at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. See you next week. Bye. This 
this is the good life.